Now, the rest of the story. December 1936, the Industrial Home for Children in Woodstock, Illinois. It's midnight, and someone is singing. Awakened by the soft, sweet melody, Oscar Allred, the manager of the children's home, rises from bed, puts on his robe. He must investigate which of the orphans in his charge, he wonders, is singing in the middle of the night. Well, first, Mr. Allred inspects the sleeping quarters, but passing room to room, he finds nothing but darkness, silence, because now the singing has stopped. Well, next morning, Mr. Allred calls the boys and girls together and asks who was singing last night. Well, the children regard one another with wide eyes, but no answer. No one is going to be punished, Mr. Allred assures them. He'd just like to know who and why, but still nobody answers. And the matter is forgotten almost. Because that evening, after the lights are out, Mr. Allred is still awake in his room. If it's a prank, he reasons, then surely the little culprit won't be able to resist a repeat performance. And sure enough, minutes later, Mr. Allred is once more in slippers and robe and out in the dark hallway and trying to discern the source of that sweet, small voice. Now, one place he'd not looked the night before was the basement. So quietly, Mr. Allred went down the stairs and... There, as he had expected, he apprehended the mystery serenader, who turned out to be the youngest orphan at the children's home. Her name was Minnie. But Mr. Allred was wrong about this being a joke. Minnie just liked to sing in privacy, and she sang very well. Well, considering her harmless intentions and her remarkable talent, Mr. Allred could hardly be angry. In fact, right then and there, he got an idea. The following day, he made two or three phone calls to the media, it was a great story, after all, a gifted orphan singing in the dark with an untrained yet entirely beautiful voice, soothing, mellifluous, and a two-octave range. Well, the media did take notice. The week before Christmas, Minnie was prepped and primped and on her way to Chicago with her escort, of course, the tall, slender Mr. Allred. Once in the Windy City, they drove to NBC Studios. This was to be Minnie's singing debut before a live audience listening to the NBC Jamboree that evening. The success of Minnie's first encounter with a microphone was summed up in the radio section of next week's Newsweek. Quote, New star makes first appearance in Chicago studios. The guest star of the evening rose to her full height. Her throat quivered, and from it poured the golden notes of a rich coloratura soprano, and so on. Within two weeks of her triumphal Blue Network debut, the diminutive prima donna had her own public relations director and movie offers and recording contracts and a string of personal appearances on stage and radio. And through it all, as far as we know, many never forgot her humble beginnings, nor now will you. Because little orphan Minnie discovered while singing in the cellar of the Industrial Home for Children, the vocalist who set the nation on its ear and thereafter was hailed as, quote, the phenomenon of the century. Why, she was a real live singing mouse. Only now you know the rest of the story.